Welcome to another episode of the Betty Allen podcast. And today I have Simon Maltman, which is who is, which is <laughs> who is a local <laughs> author and a great, great friend. His wife is my best friend as well. So it's an <laughs> honor to have you keep, to have you here. Welcome, Simon. <laughs> Thank you, very, thank you very much. Thanks for having me, Betty. This is, this is cool. <laughs> oh, thank you for being here. Um, so today I haven't actually organized too much this interview because I really just thought it's better to let it flow because there's nothing better than having like a WeChat and just uh, just talking about what we're going to talk about. So I'm going to ask you whatever questions come <laughs> up and we'll see. <laughs> so first of all, no if, part. if you can just introduce yourself for the people that don't know you. Yeah, I'm Simon Waltman. Uh, I'm from Bangor, and I write crime fiction books, um, short stories, and then the last few years I've been doing uh, mostly novels, thrillers. Ian, and who are you? Who are you? Do you have any kids? Well, am I? Uh, <laughs> in, a really deep, in a really deep way. Um, well, <laughs> I, I'm married, as Betty said, uh, to one of her best buds, and um, I've got two wee girls, even neither, who hopefully... Or being put down to bed at the minute because I, I went and escaped off so we could record this so it's uh, <laughs> it's good it's, it's good timing yes. having, having a night off <laughs> I know so they, they they might be in bed now but they're, they're probably running about trying to avoid it uh, <laughs> as usual <laughs> well um I have Amelia and I know she was making notes and I was like we'll just add it <laughs> sound afterwards um so I wanted to have you in this podcast because I've been focusing a lot in arts and I enjoy art a lot and one of the things that I like to see is behind the scenes what goes behind the scenes and I I do enjoy art but I like the creativity part I like how like most yeah. of my friends and I actually mentioned that on the on the I think it was on the preview for the podcast I said the majority of my friends are either musicians or teachers <laughs> and that is the thing that most of my friends are that's like kind of like the people yeah. that I hang out with and it's obviously the interest that I have most and Simon for those of you who don't know him he's not only an author he's also a musician he plays and sings and he's actually really good and like, well that's another <laughs> for another episode <laughs> but part of who he is comes from all that part of like artistic and creative and you will sense that on him so um that's why I wanted to talk about your books. Like what made you uh, start the very first book? Because I remember being on, on on the lounge of your first book. And, um... Oh yeah, yeah. So tell yeah, us about, it, a little bit about that. Yeah, because it, it, it flies in. And uh, the, those were times we were allowed to do things like actually meet up and uh, have like, you know, large large enough numbers of people in one room <clears throat> which seems <laughs> seems weird now I mean goodness knows when we'll get to do because uh, mm -hmm. I really enjoy doing book events and and going to book events and that type of thing and so I can't say anytime soon um but we've been <laughs> lots of online type launches and things but uh, but you, you you can't really you can't really beat the property meeting up sure you can't and uh and having the crack and whatnot um but but yeah that that, that first book that was called um a chase on the rocks that was a good night and like you said it's it's nice mixing in the music and uh but we had all different people playing that night um yeah the, the, but remember the guys were playing like with the mandolins and the wee banjos and all uh yeah later on and that, yeah we had a few people playing guitar and then invited some people down here who were poets and uh, they read stuff. I think for my first launch in particular, it was like, I don't want to be doing this all on my own. I don't want to be standing at the front for like an hour and a half. <clears throat> so it was kind of like, I'll just do the segues. Everybody can keep on doing their thing. <laughs> sort of spread, really spread good, the responsibility. Actually, good idea for a launch for a book. So tell us how many books have you write so far and how many, it is a good question, how many have you write during uh, lockdown, during COVID? Oh, um, well, um, I always have to, I always have to put them through my head to try and work out because <laughs> I do forget. Um, the novels, nine the first two they were together, and then there's a third one, three, and then four or five. So, so the minute uh, I've recently finished number six, um, so I'm, I'm I'm looking to sell that to a publisher at the minute, and then I'm working on. I just started a new one actually there last week, so that'll be novel number seven. Um, but yeah, fun enough during lockdown, because usually I would have a book out, sort of roughly a book out a year, <clears throat> sometimes maybe a few short stories and anthologies and stuff. Um, but just the way it worked out with timings, 
I had a book called The Mark and it came out in the first lockdown in March and then my second book uh, this year called Witness, it just happened to get launched later in the year and it came out in the second lockdown there just before Christmas. Uh, so it must be my thing now, I have to launch a book every time there's a lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great way to, to spend lockdown, I suppose. Some people maybe have been like being more creative as well and finding things that they didn't do before. Yeah. And during lockdown, we've been doing it. Um, not me, because I was really busy during lockdown. <laughs> I wish I was. <laughs> but tell me, how many books have you read that are... Because it used to be um, only... Um, I was going to say science fiction, but it's not science fiction. It's uh, fiction, crime fiction or crime? Fiction, yeah. yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And also novel, novels. Um, just correct me there, because I can't remember. No, yeah, 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 no, no, it, it's all really under crime fiction. You know, some of them are more sort of thrillers, or some are maybe more sort of whodunit mysteries and whatnot. Uh, at the minute, I'm doing more mostly thrillers. Um, I, I suppose because, you know, uh, personally, I mean, like it, within crime fiction, I like all different sort of sub genres. Um, but at the minute, I'm particularly enjoying thrillers, and a lot of a lot of people seem to be really into thrillers and maybe it's the escapism um, and, and serial killers are really popular at the minute. There seems to be like a million serial I know, killer I don't movies know, from Dexter um, or something. They start to go like really, people yeah. really like that sort of like thrillers and murder. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, mysteries there's, and... there's, there's all, all sorts. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, um, the one I'm, uh, I just finished is a, is a serial killer novel I hadn't really done before, so uh, hopefully that was good timing because I started I started writing that before there was this sort of boom. Uh, but it's, we'll we'll have to see <laughs> if I get it sold anytime soon. <laughs> Here I have a, a deep deep question, and this is probably the question that I really <clears throat> wanted to get from you in this interview, and is where do you get the ideas from? How do you get inspired on any sort of book, even when you started the book and you? like any art artist that gets stuck sometimes yeah. and you just have to improvise or you, or you just have to or get stuck and like i have to keep going and so yeah. where do you get the ideas well, from well you know um it, it can't be any any little thing and often there's just little germs from all sorts of different bits of pieces um and, and in particular the things that end up being scattered throughout a novel i find it's literally if you happen to go to different places or you see something or you see an interaction a family or you're listening to a certain type of music and you think it might work or maybe you're watching a movie and you think the kind of environment will work in a certain scene but 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 overall the idea like for the for a new novel um sometimes it comes really very quickly and it's, it's my favorite part of the whole process because it's the most exciting part and in a way there's no pressure because um you know because if the idea is just sort of coming through and you get a couple of ideas you think oh that's that could work and then if fortunately, even if you're just in the shower or something and all the different ideas come, I mean, I would never have a massive idea for a, the full novel because you just, I mean, you couldn't really envision the whole 80,000 words. Um, but there's some writers who literally just get a wee idea and they just start. They don't know where they're going at all. And I, I don't really do that. I did it more in the early days, but now I much more prefer to spend a few weeks or a few months roughly planning it out and just letting the story sort of go in the directions. I mean, it still changes a lot when you write it and it's still obviously very enjoyable when you're doing it because you don't know quite what it's doing but I mean like the one I just started there it, it came very quickly I was watching something on TV um, I, I better not say what it is because yeah, don't <laughs> say it, it, don't say it. <laughs> uh, but I got the idea and I thought well, what if this happened and I thought oh that could be more of that work and then that just feels really exciting to me and I got my we get my notebook out and start making notes and think oh I could do this and then um, and that's what I've been doing the last few weeks and even I've just started writing it but a lot of the time is more we've been making notes and doing a lot, like a lot of research like I'm starting to set a couple of books in, in New York just to find that I've been writing more high concept thrillers so they're more like big sort of bigger ideas bigger sort of characters so it needed a bigger sort of place to set them but um, I, I haven't been to New York so, so uh, but if you can't write about New York you can you know, go to Google Maps and just walk on the street. Oh, I'm on Google Maps all the time. I, I've got I've got big street maps to pull out and, and a guidebook and, uh, and 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 forever talking to people about New York and then even just watching New York set movies from all over the decades is actually useful and just noting down stuff. Um, but I think if you can't read about New York, then um, I couldn't be very good because you must be able to describe it. <laughs> I mean, to a certain degree, you would hope because it's so much embedded into the you know our culture and everything um, yeah. 
but 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 also i suppose you know i, I shied away from that before i only ever used to write like the first six books all set in northern ireland about places i knew but i sort of thought you don't have to do that i mean science fiction writers just make stuff up completely and you yeah. know what not so you know i think you can you can do that although if the arts parents want to send me on a free trip to new york that would be fine too <coughs> and that wouldn't come any anytime soon i, I remember um, but, there's a lot of ideas that comes to mind especially whenever i was like really young i used to like um paulo coelho um i don't know if you heard of him but he's more like I don't exactly. even know what sort of writer he's. I, I'm not a fan anymore. <laughs> but he used to be very focused on like religion. But like there was a lot of things. He was such a good writer. I thought. Yeah. That he made things very believable. That you will be like, you yeah. know, when you're watching like a science fiction movie, and you're like, oh my goodness, this is so real. Um, yeah. And I used to enjoy that. And the other, um, there was no another author. Um, is there's a book called La Rayuela, which is in Spanish, but. Um, mm -hmm. It's kind of like the idea of uh, I don't know if you see Black Mirror Bandersnatch, where yeah. you 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 select your story, so you can either he starts with like you could, you can eat Frosties or cornflakes or whatever it was, mm -hmm. and then the story goes completely the other way, and then there's like five endings. That to me is like yeah. epic. Like how can someone write a story and then you move through the pages and the, and then go back and forward depending on on the story and and it all makes yeah. sense that seems to me very complicated and the other the other thought that came to mind whenever uh, we were talking was um about talking about crime and all the ideas i was like oh my goodness me being from mexico and seeing so much crime we don't yeah. have that many like rules in mexico about newspapers so you see the newspapers you're walking past and you see everything yeah. Every, like, everything that is possible you can think of they don't even hide it from you like it, it just but, and it gives people ideas and i'm like oh my goodness yeah. this is terrifying i was like this would be a great idea i can tell simon all these things because uh, some of the things that come like for example something really really scary kind of like like burning a person burning down you need like to have certain degree of like the heat has to be a certain degree so you can be like oh that person burned into a fire and is in ashes no that, that can't happen you know like yeah. so you kind of like you try to put some of the reality or no and i see that in like tv and stuff um but like you say yeah. like, that's part of the creativity like you can invent streets or make up stories and sort of like well, yeah 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 because because it, it, it's funny trying to get a mix because when i'm doing things like that like even at the minute i was researching <clears throat> There's a character who's going to be in prison in New York, and I was researching that last night. But um, I found that lots of different prisons in New York that only have certain people there, and they only be for certain periods of time. So I had to find like the right prison who he would be likely to be in, <clears throat> or where he would have likely to be in the sentence. So I do quite like getting those details right. Although I also don't mind sometimes just making up random streets or bars because you can do that too. But people kind of get very sniffy if you if you get <coughs> small details wrong. I can so, find um, a bar, where is it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And, uh, <laughs> and, and people get really annoyed if you describe like their town wrong and, and stuff. So, so, so to a certain degree, it's, it's one of the reasons that, I mean, I, I quite like police procedural TV shows, but maybe I don't read as, as many uh, police procedural books. Um, I mean, there's a lot of good ones, but it's not particularly my thing. I prefer thrillers with different protagonists and different things going on. And that's what I tend to write. But yeah. It's also partly because I'm just afraid to do a main police detective because I know that I would get the it wrong. You know, there are police things happen in my books, but they're not usually the primary character um, because then people can get very difficult as well if you don't keep up with exactly the way the interview should go and the exact way the protocol would be followed and who reports to who and all that stuff. Uh, so in a way, I don't want to get bogged down in that. I prefer coming up with stories story that you I just, can just keep thought. going. <laughs> Sorry that I interrupted you there, but I just got a thought. Maybe you're getting the wrong audience. Maybe you should get the <laughs> other way around. Completely random. That that's why people will like you. That like that sort of stories because it's like, God, it doesn't make sense, but it's brilliant because I well, my idea obviously this is obviously my opinion is like see the stories that are really like there's a law a lot of law like american yeah. law for example and yeah. so that they're very um i don't know if it's like for example how to get away with murder i love that show but like they yeah. try to keep everything like the constitution and all of that so if you try to, i don't know if, they, if it's true or not but if you try to keep yourself like on the real world 
I don't know. Do you think that will stop some of the creativity from happening, or how would you uh, have to know about that? <laughs> well, well, I suppose. I mean, because uh, <clears throat> I suppose you have to do research for all different stuff, uh, and I don't. And I like I like doing that. Um, but the action nitty gritty of all that sort of stuff, I, I find very dry. And, and and just anyway, you know, there's so many shows and books, like literally millions, that feature like a. a a white middle-aged policeman or whatever there's only so many times you can do that who has a drink problem and who's who's divorced and doesn't see their child much you know it's the same old thing so to a certain degree i like to mix it up too so like for instance uh the book that i just released witness um it features around the east belfast pastor and he used to be in with paramilitaries and he's kind of the main person you're following and he's trying to unravel different things um and the book that i've just finished um it's set in the 80s and um, it featured this uh, career criminal <clears throat> who's um, doing different jobs and his paths end up uh, crossing with a serial killer who's on the loose in New York. Um, so, so he ends up sort of being the guy who's nearly trying to track down the, the killer, but it wouldn't be the usual sort of person just trying to make it a bit different. So he's actually a, a thief himself, but he's that kind of, you know, likable enough thief, you know, he's not too bad. He still does some bad things. Because uh, at the end of the day, my main characters always are a little bit bad. Some of them are pretty <laughs> and awful. But I think that's well, because... Well, smarter, usually. Because you know, <laughs> cause, do, do you know why? Because it's so boring to write a really nice character. And, and I think it's boring to read it too. If someone's really like, I'm nicey nice and I'm never grumpy. Like, nobody's like that. I never do anything wrong. Okay. You know, feed the birds every morning and a volunteer in the evenings. You know, n n n nobody's perfect and good all the time. So I think if you're writing a really nice character... It's not very believable, but also not nice. And, and, and equally, there's no point in writing villains and baddies really who are <laughs> bad through and through because nobody's bad through or through either. Um, although it is obviously fun to come up with a kind of serial killer who's a bit of a sociopath, but they'll still have some redeeming qualities or can at least pass themselves at times, you know. <laughs> I know. And it seems like I was talking, I was having a conversation not long ago um, about, uh, I think it was, we were talking about like murder shows and, and we were saying, is that kind of show that is like, you're almost covering the murder, you like, you like the murder and, and, and oh, yeah, it's very yeah. like, it's a body, but you, you like the body and it's completely true. And, 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 I, and I like, I like a lot of true crime documentaries and, and me and Anna watch loads of them um but sometimes it does feel a bit voyeuristic and you're sort of thinking you, you, like you say you are kind of and, and sometimes you're thinking you know how many do they murder is that all you're sort of thinking but then you think to yourself I shouldn't be wanting that this person murdered more people just for my entertainment and I shouldn't be wanting to hear everything about the murder uh, and that's why I think sometimes they're done really well and sometimes they're maybe a little bit too you know over the top and um, <laughs> sensationalist, I suppose, um, and, and some of them are just very depressing. Like we watched the York, the Yorkshire Ripper one there. I think we watched it just after Christmas, which isn't isn't good Christmas viewing. And we were just really like, it's just so it's all just so horrible and murky and sad. Uh, but you know, true true crime definitely it is it, it is a thing to stay, to to stay. I think you know everybody's devouring it, and and it's like you're saying about you know the crime in Mexico, you know. I, I do a walking tour as well. You know about the Belfast Wire. And we talk a lot about the Nor Northern Irish crime scene, which has boomed in the last 20 years. And people often talk about why did we not have much of a scene before that. But I think a lot of that was because we had so much like paramilitary crime here and, and like basically war <laughs> on the streets. And, and people weren't writing crime fiction because it was too close to home. And I think that's why <clears throat> people my sort of age, like late 30s, yeah. 40s, um, you know, we were all sort of growing up, at, you know, around the, the, the Good Friday Agreement. And, you could, and you do could you like to of... write about, um, like, those sort of local things? Are, like, pe yeah. people, people that know you know that, you know, you will use some, um, like, some of the sayings that you, you write on your book. Sometimes yeah. it's, like, very Northern Irish. And um, yeah. I like that because it's, like, something that you don't get everywhere in the world. It will be something very niche and for a writer. I like that. So tell yeah, me a bit, about, yeah, a bit of that. It, it, yeah, it's funny because um, I always do have that, that Northern Irish trying to get that Northern Irish thing in. Um, but it can be a problem sometimes because a few of my publishers have been uh, in America and sometimes really don't understand <laughs> what I'm trying <laughs> well, to say or some things can sound 
<laughs> yeah, or things can start to kind of be like offensive when they're not, or or just like it's bad grammar <clears throat> when it's just actually oh, yeah. you know the way we happen to talk. Um, but but equally so, since I've started writing a couple of books set in America, I find myself then worried as well. That I don't want to m- misrepresent people there, and you don't want to make their language sound like cliches. Um, but 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 oh, it, it's simple. I mean, <laughs> I mean, so... I mean. R- 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 I suppose the, the actual writing dialogue is, is really good fun. You know, it's it's a it's a fun part of the books, um, and and I suppose it's trying to as it's trying to make all the characters sound different, so it's realistic. Um, yeah. it's obviously on the page, on a page you're not seeing facial expressions. You have to try and get all that across. You're not seeing what people are like. You have to be able to describe without boring people. You know what the person looks like, and hopefully little signs of their body language without being too too obvious. I suppose that's the whole trick of, of writing to, to engage with oh people my, no, but, you know. my brain right now is going like imagine a crime book about a crazy <laughs> mexican coming to northern <laughs> ireland <laughs> and saying well, things in <clears throat> spanish in mexican spanish and blah, blah, blah. oh my god I, 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 I might have to I have to pick you into one of my one of my books sometimes there, there's a, 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 a i've just got i've just started getting some uh, new reviews and for the new book uh, which is which is always uh, the point where you you can sort of feel a little, a little less nervous when you first get a couple of reviews and people are like you know, okay then it's like few because 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 you just you just don't know if anybody if people are going to hate it or not um but but what, what, one of the bloggers who would review a lot of my books uh she did ask to go on one of my books so i i slaughtered her in one time uh she really enjoyed it she was very pleased i, oh, I, I although i turned around there uh, i turned around to a, a one-armed barmaid i think if i remember uh i can't remember i think she got killed off too um <clears throat> but you know <laughs> well, there's a lot there's so much i mean there is literally so much i'm like mexican crime people whenever they they meet me it's like oh mexico like drug cartels and cartels are just so famous for entertainment and i'm like oh, that's horrible that's terrible but it entertains yeah. people so and like why not like why not it's just yeah. an option so you can always have it there <laughs> oh yeah sounds good i mean it, 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 it's definitely something that um it's always in the back of your mind too when you're writing that you know um because there is so much sort of criticism of books now and everybody's got an opinion obviously and there's so many places for people to blog and leave reviews on amazon and goodreads and everything um that you do have to be careful in a way when you're writing things because it would have violence and murder, murders <clears throat> but hopefully you know try and purposely not make it gratuitous or and you don't want to be like sort of like killing you know the kind of cliche like killing young girls for the sake of it you don't want to be doing that um you don't want it to be really horrible but i wouldn't write like really horrible stuff in a way <clears throat> but it is, it is a tricky one um Yeah, I just think that I think this is obviously a very personal opinion, but I think that even the the most evil person in the world has something good on them. Like they yeah. they might be just looking after their family, and maybe they do all this crime or like these happen a lot in Mexico. And um, that you might think, oh, it's a really really bad person, but they care about their family. They said there's something in the story yeah. that you can always find, um, and it doesn't have to be completely destructive or or violent or you know, aggressive or anything like in a negative way but to be like, yeah, positive, which, positive which, which is, which is the, it's the, it's always the fun part when I'm trying to work out who your character is as you're going, you know, because yeah. even like if you have something like a serial killer, you know, there might be a serial killer who's literally, you want them to just be really nuts and they'll just go around killing people on a frenzy <laughs> or you could, or you could have a serial killer who's more like, uh, I don't know, Jack the Ripper and he's kind of setting out because he wants to kill a certain certain people but then you can have other killers i mean like um tom ripley and you know the town of mr ripley and the ripley books by patricia heisman they're really good but he, he he kills a lot of people but he's not doing it for pleasure it's more just like it's kind of inconsequential it's just because <laughs> they're in his way so he just kills them um but, like but it, a but lot it, of the shows that it's like oh this just happened and i have to kill it like how do you call <laughs> this show um you Have you watched that oh, yeah, show? I yeah. think it's on Netflix. <clears throat> and yeah. you kind of like the guy, and then it's like, it's quite creepy. And then it's like, but he doesn't doesn't look like he's going to kill people, but it's just like, oh, he was on the way, so I have to get it done. But like, you would understand why I kill him <laughs> and ends up killing like uh, thousands. And there's like, like an idea or there was this show that I really like called The Sinner. Have you seen it? Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I, I really like that. Yeah, that was, I think there's been 
three seasons, I think. Has three. Been... I, I haven't watched the third one. The second I didn't really like, but the first one, oh my goodness, I think it was. Yeah, the first one was very brilliant. good. Brilliant, brilliant, really was, well. Uh, Jessica, Jessica Biel, wasn't it? Uh, I don't remember I her name. Jessica Biel and your guy. I can't remember her name. And what do you call? What do you call your main guy? He's really good. He was the president in Independence Day. Uh, oh, what's his name? Oh, the the main guy, the. The detective, yeah. Yeah, the detective. Oh, I I know. I'll put it on the description. I, 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 <laughs> like yeah, I I'm really bad with names. Um, but yeah, it, it's really, it's a really good show. I mean, there's been so much like uh, lockdown. I always remember as well as watching Tiger King for the first time. <laughs> that was good. Oh yeah, we all did, and then watch. boom, COVID. Um, I wanted to ask yeah. about about your book. Tell us about your new book. Oh yeah, I, I'll give you, I'll give you a little. Show <laughs> witness so, 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 from this, Simon this it, it came out just before Christmas yeah witness um so it's sort of um I had a bit of a launch at the time and then I've been I've, I've got a, a blog tour happening this week actually so the first sort of couple of reviews have been coming out and then we've got a bit of a big more of another kind of launch this weekend so there should be lots of reviews going up and going around different blogs so that'll be nice um but this is about the one about um it's an East Belfast pastor and he he's a pastor for this big church called <clears throat> Icot, which is meant to be a fictional sort of uh big sort of meeting house American style uh one, which I had very <laughs> a lot of difficulty in naming because every time I came up with an idea for a name like you know the Christian such and such of Cornerstone or the blah blah blah, I found like every every possible permutation has been used. So I had to come up with like a really ex- obscure <laughs> name for it. Just- uh, c- c- just in case, like anybody would get really annoyed. Those are the sort of things you do have to watch out for sometimes. Mm. Um, so, okay. so basically, it, it, it's a bit of a kind of revenge, and it's like a post troubles. It kind of looks back a little bit of the troubles because usually I try and avoid the troubles in a way. Uh, but this is like a guy who sort of grew up at the end of the troubles, and he's in a lot of money difficulties, and he's trying to get a lot of stuff done in his church. Um, but he keeps on making very bad decisions, and I, I was interested in the idea of if he keeps on trying to make really bad decisions, but he thinks he's doing the right thing by his religion, how bad could I make him with him still thinking he's trying to be a good man? So that's the kind of idea, and he ends up doing some pretty terrible things, and everything kind of goes wrong around him. Um, and he gets involved again with his uncle, who was a kind of former paramilitary leader and stuff, and then things sort of spiral out. But um, yeah, no, I was, interested, <laughs> I was interested in just um, getting a bit more sort of different religious questions in and um and having how it affects people and things but it's still, but it's still also like um it's it's a thriller and it's it's quite it's quite pissy as well so um uh that that's it in a nutshell <laughs> that's very good that's so yeah. good i am um, congratulate you for having so many <laughs> so many books i mean i i think is like i find really really hard to think of like how do you come up with creativity and then you get like the idea of the book and then like like you said, sometimes you get stuck a little bit with like the name yeah. because you want to not be like politically cl- political, I can't even say it because politically incorrect or oh, uh, offend yeah. in a way yeah. uh, like a part of the society or something. So it's, I I find that really hard to like, and I see that with like artists in general. Like if you're yeah. like, I don't know, maybe saying maybe making a music and yeah there's something no i don't know words or sayings and well, well, well I, I, I definitely always say to people that different you know writing groups have been to or <clears throat> you know different seminars um that the important thing is really nearly just to be disciplined to whatever degree you can be I, I i'm quite disciplined in that i will write for like an hour or so every night at a certain time really so i know i'll get stuff down or some writers are more in and out and, and i'll find other times to get some writing done but I think the important thing is just to actually stick at it and get it done because there's so many writers out there who just never sort of get around to finishing it or you, you leave it for months or even years and um, so I think if you want to do it you have to just get it down and also no matter who you are your first draft is always going to be pants you know <laughs> nobody I don't think yeah. hardly does a good first the draft the first one's gotta never going to be a, perfect no, and I, I mean, have a, I, the last very last question for this interview chat um, <laughs> and, and this is kind of like the core thing I have wanted in this podcast is that part of like behind the scenes, the things that we don't see, like some people might be very good at literature uh, and uh, they might not even, they might not have a good idea. I don't know if you want to write a book and you like poetry or whatever it is or stories. Um, 
how do you do it like who edits the book and who approves it and like what happens yeah. behind the scenes is basically the question yeah my goodness well it's it's um it's it's such a uh complicated thing now because more because there's so many different routes that, and I've, <laughs> I've done a number of them um you know basically you, you need to have your whole first draft done and you need another draft at least done where you get out you weed out some of the bits and pieces <clears throat> and then you have to just approach people you can go through an agent or if not go directly to a publisher so i've been with uh sort of through three or four different publishers and, and some of them you know are you know, or more high profile in areas and some are particularly good at other areas or whatever. Um, but but the long and short would be that you would usually sign a contract to, to tie in for a number of years and you'll agree to your amount of royalties and stuff like that. Um, they would then do another few edits <clears throat> on the manuscript along with you and you, you're back and forward uh, with the dreaded track changes. Um, <laughs> and and then you would, usually they would develop a cover. Although the last few books, um, they've let me design my own covers which was oh, wow. which is nice because I quite enjoyed doing that. Um, uh, but it just depends on, on the publisher. Yeah, um, and then again they'll do the editing. That they should do all the setting up of how to actually make it for sale and kind of get in the libraries or bookshops or just Amazon or you know any of the other ones. Um, but because that's the the main sort of way you go. But it really depends on the type of publisher. You know, some publishers would have a, quite a big team. So again, some of them might be doing more of the marketing and social media and some of them will do things like go and get you interviews. Uh, but but there's always known as particularly now with any art form, you have to be out there on social media and doing things and trying to, you know, engage with people and get people interested in the books. And uh, you'll always have to do a lot of marketing yourself. But but if you're lucky to get with a bigger publisher, they'll do some of that and they'll set up interviews, but you still, you have to put the work in for actually getting in touch. And also, you know, you're, you're never going to get signed right away. You have to know that there's going to be tons of rejections along the way. <clears throat> I mean, even big writers still get rejected for anthologies and things and and sometimes get dropped by publishers. So you're, you're kind of never out of the woods. <clears throat> so I think you, have, you do have to develop the thick skin and you just know that that's part of it. And, you know, that that's just yeah. the way it is. <laughs> but but then if but hopefully, you know, if you enjoy doing it, then then you should definitely do it and, and get in touch with with other writers, particularly like we've got a great writing scene in Northern Ireland. And obviously we can't all meet up at the minute, but. There's a lot of artists supportive. in Northern Ireland. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. So yeah. many. And, and so and, and much all quality. All spheres. Yeah, no, 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 very much so. Yeah. And um, I was I was thinking about your books uh, and other people that have wrote books. And um, if you read a book and it's a really good, I remember I used to love reading um, Harry Potter, for example. And whenever the yeah. movie come up, like it's usually it's like, oh, the movie is not it doesn't make justice to the book the book has so much detail yeah. of course when you're reading you, you you just go through so much detail and i just think that in your mind it's better because you make it the way you want to be so I, sometimes i think yeah. the books can be more fulfilling more rich than a movie which i yeah. am a movie addict i love movies but whenever you read a book and then watch the movie sometimes it's like oh no no, it doesn't make. And when you're the yeah, writer, no, 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 it's 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 true. It's very seldom that you know even movies. Are really, I mean, there's some movie adaptions are great, like <clears throat> Misery or something like that. You know, do it real justice, but they still tend not to be as good as the books. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, thank you so much. I don't even know how long we've been there, but I feel like I've been keeping you for so long. So, <laughs> oh, no, 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 but thank you so, so much for this um, interview. And I'm going to put all your details, but where can people find you if they want to follow you on Instagram or Facebook or a website? I don't know, any blog or any information you want to give yeah. us? Yeah, um, well, on Instagram, it's just, I think, at Simon Maltman. And I think Twitter's at Simon Maltman and on facebook it's simon boltman crime fiction and then there's a there's a there's a blog as well you can search for it should it should pop up and then the easiest place to get the books or the likes of no alibis locally or um the, the uh, amazon you might have heard that the, 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 there's some, some company, i think they're doing okay for themselves yeah <laughs> if they if they want to get your books on can they get them in i, I actually don't know this um Amazon around the world, or is it just in the UK? Or no, no, no it's uh, it's all your local country, so uh, it's all the different countries, and um, the reviews and things are all up in Goodreads too. Um, 
yeah and then obviously <clears throat> the ebooks e- 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 and whatnot you know depending on what people are into we'll put the we'll put the details anyway on the description on youtube and uh, on all the podcasts anyway well thank you oh, very cool. much thank i won't take much. any more of your time um so thank you and i will see you next week thank you simon <laughs> thanks for having me Anna. hopefully we'll, 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 we'll get a coffee in the near future <laughs> right, we will <laughs> bye bye <laughs>